gives me great, immense pleasure to our entire network to welcome the dynamic Solicitor General of India, the very erudite Mr. Tushar Mehta as our next speaker. Mr. Mahesh Chetpalani, myself, Rhythm and the entire network, for all of us, it is a great pleasure that Mr. Tushar Mehta is with us. Mr. Tushar Mehta is, is known to anyone really who keeps up, uh, who keeps up with the news, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because he has built a reputation uh, for himself, truly Rhythm, as a lawyer who can hand it at all, handle it all, Rhythm. Absolutely. And as we welcome Mr. Tushar Mehta here, Solicitor General of India, we also say, uh, Arnab, Mr. Jait Malani, he's been the person who's been at the forefront of every constitutional case, whether it's Article 370, whether there are center state disputes, or whether it's corruption cases. He's the main man for the center when it comes to fighting disputes in the Supreme Court and the High Court. And I think specifically, Arnab, it comes to national security, national significance and nation building where he's most importantly used by the central government in the courts. Absolutely, whether it be the abrogation of Article 370 to the Ayodhya land dispute to a gamut of corruption matters or, or to matters of constitutional significance as you said on center state disputes and much more, he's the lawyer who the center has been fielding. But, but, but on this occasion, what I must mention is that Mr. Tushar Mehta is someone who has witnessed the courtroom wit, battles, craft of Mr. Ram Jaitmalani firsthand. We would like him to talk about this as well, whether by arguing alongside him or against him. Mr. Ram Jaitmalani remains famous for his no holds barred style, and we know that Tushar Mehta, in a way, is no different. So, to speak about the legal scholarship, and personality of Mr. Jait Malani, his fierce representation of his clients and of him as a person, there could be no better voice than Mr. Tushar Mehta. Mr. Tushar Mehta, welcome uh, to this lecture series and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Arnav. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I pay my regards to the Honorable Vice President of India. It's indeed a privilege to be a perennial member, a perennial participant in Sri Ram Jaitmalani Memorial Lecture Series. Uh, I always come on this series, not in my capacity as a Solicitor General, but always as a fan of Sri Ram Jaitmalani. Ram, we used to lovingly call him. Arnav, my association with Ram had been very long and very intense. Mostly, I always appeared with him, and in very few cases, I appeared against him. But in either which ways, I ended up learning something new daily. Mostly, people do a disservice to such a giant of a man by remembering him as a greatest criminal lawyer of the times. I don't agree with that. Ram Jaitmalani was greatest lawyer of his times, be it criminal law, constitutional law, corporate law, or any subject which he handled. To confine his legal acumen to merely criminal law would be doing injustice to this giant. I am indeed grateful to his worthy son, Mahesh Jaitmalani, who by his own right is an eminent lawyer, an eminent counsel, a person of eminence in parliament also, and I am proud to say a very personal and a dear friend who treats me as a family. Friends, I would not be able to say anything much on the subject in my capacity as the Solicitor General of India. And as I said, I am, my views are personal views. My views are as a student of law and my views are as someone who is a fan of Sri Ram Jaitmalani. First of all, let us make one thing clear that uniform civil code, a very right choice of subject chosen by my dear friend Mahesh for his father, is not a political slogan. 
it's not political slogan of a particular political party. People must know that this is the manifestation of desire of the framers of the constitution and it was the constituent assembly which put this particular provision as a desire in article 44 of the constitution of India. So first of all, let us not understand or evaluate this subject as a political slogan. Second, all of us know that India, India has always been a very reformative country. India is fast developing nation. We are competing with other developed nations also. And the world look upon us, look forward to us and look at us with a country who will do wonders in times to come. I don't consider the question of uniform civil code as a question of either any religious issue or any other angle. First of all, we can do injustice to the subject by linking this subject directly or indirectly with triple talaq issue. This is the mistake people from both the spectrum of the subject commit. Those who are in favor try to seek support from triple talaq issue. Those who are against try to find out some lacunas from the triple talaq issue. I therefore out at the outset say that please do not treat this subject even remotely connected with triple talaq issue. For me, it's a question of equality in general and equality of women in particular. India has always treated men and women equally. That's our strength. That's how India is known not only within the country but outside the country. But except in cases of say political representation or employment exchange, etc., there is less of the equality so far as women are concerned. And when I say this, it might at the outset sound to be a little startling statement. But on issues like, say, inheritance, right to property, right to a share in the property, several family matters, India could not treat women equally with men. As a matter of fact, even amongst the Hindus, the daughter got a co right very recently, relatively. So for me, this is a question of equality. Equality for women, one woman across the religion, governed by the same law across the religion. Second, equality in general. Friends, we know that all citizens are governed by several laws. For example, all penal laws are common for all citizens. There is no separate Indian penal code for Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, Buddhists. No. The same procedure is adopted under the criminal procedure code. We have uniform taxation laws across the religions. We have uniform laws pertaining to the properties across the religions. The question is, why can't we have uniform laws with regard to family issues and issues concerning human relations? This is where the question of equality comes. So when I talk of equality, I necessarily talk of equality between two women belonging to different religions, two men belonging to different religions, and one man and one woman belonging to the same religion. Can we not thrive to make everyone equal? Friends, India is always a reformative society. We have always been. 
we have always accepted change if it is a change for better. An average Indian is smart enough to know what is good, what is moral, what is ethical, what is in the best interest of the society and what is in the best interest of the family. We have accepted in past Dowry Prohibition Act. We have accepted in past Child Marriage Restraint Act. There are several acts which across the religious borders are accepted by India as a society, as a nation. Can we not experiment making everyone equal with respect to every aspect of law and that's the question which is going to be debated. Goa already has uniform civil code. Of course, there is a section of the society which says it needs some tweaking. Uttarakhand, I'm told, is already experimenting on that. The question is, shall we or shall we not? That the question on which all the learned speakers I am very eager to listen to, would debate. But as a citizen of the country and as a student of law, I say the country is ready for this equality. It's of course a matter of legislative discretion and therefore I can say nothing more on the subject. But if such a decision is taken and as and when it is taken, if at all it is taken, I am sure the present government under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji has the political will and courage to take reformative steps if they are in larger national interest. Again, uh, a caveat that these are my personal views. While debating also, I would requ request everyone not to mix up the triple talaq issue with the issue of uniform civil code as according to me, this is merely an issue of equality. I am really thankful to my dear friend Mahesh and a very eminent journalist of the country and abroad, Arnav Goswami, and a very astute lawyer come journalist, Ritham Bhardwaj, for giving me this opportunity to share my personal views. Thank you very much, Arnav. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Solicitor General of India, uh, uh, Sri Tushar Mehta ji. And I think if I may just respond very briefly to what you said, First of all, I think all of us here understand the limitations and uh, you've put that caveat very strongly that as Solicitor General of India, these are your personal views. But while having said that, I must thank you as well on all our behalf for elevating the discussion to one on equality. Because very often, if this issue gets mired in politics, uh, then, then it gets a different spin altogether. However, you have directly in a way linked it to Article 14, that it is the duty of the state that it shall not discriminate against any citizen for or against any citizen on, on, on matters of religion, caste, sex, place of birth and therefore you have linked it in a way what is enshrined in our directive principles to the fundamental right of equality that every citizen uh, truly deserves. And I thank you for elevating this conversation to that. I thank you for your participation, for your warm words on Mr. Ram Palani and, and for helping us kick off this series. Thank you. Mr. Tushar Mehta, thank you so much indeed.